EA Sports has hit the key with FIFA 20. Ultimate Team is still as addictive as ever. Flashback. Although we have not been able to play any online matches in Ultimate Team, the truth is we do not believe that it's necessary to assess the gameplay. What? <laughs> With the recent controversy surrounding video game reviews with games like Last of Us 2, Fallout 76, and many more, I thought I'd discuss one of the biggest issues surrounding FIFA, the critics. I only spent a brief moment in my FIFA job video talking about influencer reviews and the potential impact they had on the annual heist that was FIFA. Most of these experienced players were a little too love-struck by the potential of FIFA 20 to see its glaring flaws. Today, I'm doing something no other person on this planet has ever done. I will be reading FIFA 20 critic reviews. The recent update by Metacritic telling users to spend more time playing the game before they post a review has really put me over the edge for this video. I think the hypocrisy of this update will become very apparent by the end of this video. The new update makes users have to wait 36 hours after a game's release before they can leave a review. That seems pretty reasonable. However, for FIFA, this should apply to every single review. Why you might ask? Well, the most important mode is one that should be only reviewed with a full server load, which only happens after global launch. And that's if I'm being generous, because the game will receive several patches in the first month that will greatly impact the gameplay of this mode. The notion that just because these special little snowflakes receive an early copy of FIFA and have credentials should entitle them to more legitimacy is laughable. It's funny that their reviews will contribute to the overall critic score, while some YouTubers and streamers that actually play this game daily for the remainder of the year will in no way impact the score. Let me pose this question. Who would you trust more? Luis Lopez Zamorano from IGN Spain, who... Yes, I creeped on Twitter, has tweeted about FIFA five or six times since the game's release. Or a guy like Inception who plays minimum 3,000 games of Ultimate Team this year, from beginning of the game cycle to its very end. If this update were to apply to everyone, we would have another problem. This update makes sense for almost every game besides FIFA. It is essential for us to be able to bomb FIFA score pre-launch if the game itself is broken, i.e. career mode, or the servers are not functional. As a user base that is absolutely held by the balls by EA because EA holds a massive monopoly over the football video game space, it is essential for us to have a voice even if it's a small one. It is important for us to warn our fellow brethren of the massive iceberg ahead that is about to hit their ship even if only a few of them decide to listen. This update helps EA tremendously in what I call the FIFA job, the annual heist that is FIFA. My prediction is that these critic reviews will once again be positive, but a very big difference this year is that users will not be able to put their input until the game's release, which is very bad because a large number of sales happens during pre-release. You know what I hate? When you're by yourself trying to watch some questionable content and Narc Stalkerberg is right behind you. Ew, go away. He thinks he knows who I am and where I'm watching from. You think I'm watching from Canada, bro? Wrong, I'm actually in Taiwan. Just kidding, I'm in Vietnam now. Oh my God, Nelly, how are you doing this? Are you that one X-Men character no one likes? The, the gambler, the gambit? Nope, I just got NordVPN. Connect up to six devices under one account with military grade encryption. You know what I love? When something is military grade, that's how you know you're getting some good shit. You don't like the service? You don't like privacy? I bet you're gonna be one of those weirdos that gets the Elon Musk Tesla chip in your head. No problem, NordVPN has the weirdos covered too with their risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Anyways, with NordVPN, you could privately surf the web and watch all the weird porn you want without Narc Stalkerberg. Use the coupon code NellyGotBoard to get 68% off a two-year plan and one additional month for free. Back to the video. Me up so much into the world of the emotions of these people. Anyways, I've gotten a bit sidetracked. This video isn't just about Metacritic. It's about the FIFA 20 critics and their fraudulent reasoning for why they gave this game such high scores. I've spent the past couple of weeks reading 20 different, get it? 20 different because FIFA, 20, oh my god, I'm so clever. Anyways, reading 20 different reviews from some of the biggest gaming websites on the planet. These reviews have many things in common aside from the boring paint dry writing. 
aside from the praising of features in the game that no one cares about while blatantly ignoring some of the biggest flaws. And the ball physics make this the best soccer game on the market. More natural first touches and more satisfying ball physics. I love the ball physics. Ball physics. Ball physics. Ball physics. La mejora en las físicas que recibe el balón. That means ball physics in Spanish or whatever. Uh, med sedic med realistic ball physique. Uh, that's some Norwegian stuff about ball physics. Boys, Pess with Adriano on the cover had good ball physics. I don't ever want to see this mentioned in any FIFA review ever again. Anyways, I specifically chose these 20 reviews because they gave FIFA the most praise it didn't deserve. So let's jump into it. IGN Spain. Disclaimer, it's in Spanish, so maybe some words got lost in translation. Electronic Arts has done it again. When the saga returned to give signs of stagnation, the company reinvented it thanks to the introduction of Volta Football. We all know IGN has essentially become a meme for bad reviews, with many of IGN's critics complaining that they are bought, their language in videos doesn't match scores, reviewers stealing other reviews verbatim, giving every single AAA title a high score, and the list goes on. The thing that becomes extremely clear when looking at every single one of these reviews is the general agenda towards Volta Praise. I'm going to ask you guys honestly, and this is where I wish they didn't remove the poll feature, how many of you have played Volta, and is it the meat and bones of this game? What is the meat of this game? For 90% of the player base, it has to be Ultimate Team, right? If you are a pro clubs person or career mode guy, fair, you should only be concerned about those modes which receive less and less updates and more under delivered promises every year. Out of the 20 reviews I looked at, every single one of them praises Volta, sometimes to an extreme, sometimes making up a majority of the review. Is it truly possible that every single person loved Volta this much, or was it just a mandatory talking point on the EA agenda? On my bed is a review from a website called We Got This Covered, and the green is all the Volta talk and Volta pictures associated with this review. This makes up majority of the review. For those of you that might not know, if you get an ad deal like the one I have in my video today, for example, the company will give you some highly recommended talking points. Look at me talking like a YouTuber, like this isn't the second ad I've ever had in my videos. For me, I like VPNs, I use them, I think it's a great product, I have no problem telling you about the features you might not know about. Volta really isn't that, it's a specific game mode that only some of you will enjoy and very few will give any time to. To me, it seems like every single review had a Volta quota that needed to be met. Like those news channel videos where everyone says the exact same thing. To me, Volta was nothing more than a half-assed idea designed to appease the fan base and to be used as a major selling point in a franchise struggling on innovations. A mode that lacked any real long-term substance or playability, a laughable experience compared to the countless hours of enjoyment I got out of FIFA Street. A mode that really needs its own engine and massive reform and gameplay mechanics to be enjoyable. A mode that cannot function in the tragedy that is the Frostbite engine. But some of these reviewers use verbiage making it seem like we're the lucky ones to receive this as a free mode. The fact that EA has implemented for free within this title makes us think that the company has definitely learned from its past mistakes because with little more detail, Volta could well be its own separate game and here I tell you why. As if EA doesn't make a billion dollars off of Ultimate Team every year with little to no innovation. I made a massive mistake back in March saying that Volta has microtransactions I did correct it recently, when it actually doesn't. Almost 900,000 views and 5,000 plus comments and not a single soul corrected me. That's how I know no one cares or plays Volta. Metacritic is just one big database for user scores and critic scores, but with this new implementation they have, they want to have more legitimate reviews on their website. You want to have less users bomb video game scores without playing the game? Great, how about we take this same approach but with critics? This one gave the game 9.2 out of 10 and the ultimate team feature 4 stars out of 5 while saying this. Although we have not been able to play any game online in ultimate team, the truth is that we do not believe that it is necessary to assess the game mode. We already know for better or worse how the game servers will work. 
Okay, so you know the game will be unplayable first week and many months after, but you're still confident enough to give it 4 out of 5 stars. They would go on to talk a bit more about pay to win and FIFA points, and I actually gotta give them some credit here because most reviewers didn't even dare discuss that. Although I appreciate the pay to win discussion at least, this small W does not account for the massive L, which is a guy giving FIFA a review without playing the most important mode, and then also giving that mode 4 out of 5 stars. This is laughable levels of incompetence from people that make a living as journalists and video game critics. So why do reviewers do this? Well, the answer is quite simple. The quicker they put out their review, the better chance they have of people finding it and ranking higher on search engines and Metacritic. Be very careful of anyone sprinting to the finish line for a video game franchise designed to be a marathon. My review of this game covered the most important mode, which was Ultimate Team, and it came out a few days before launch just in the hopes of saving some of my viewers time and money on this franchise. I specifically said I'm making some predictions based on what I've seen currently in the game and that the game is not worth your time. I also made it extremely clear in my video that if my predictions were not to come true, I would remove the video and apologize for jumping to conclusions based on what I played in early access. Sadly, all of my predictions came true. I think this is a good time to point out that 85% of these reviews came out before global launch. Almost none of these positive reviews were revisited, edited, or modified. This isn't a solo single player experience, this is an ever growing, ever changing game that requires you to play it throughout the year to get a full assessment of its capabilities and lack thereof. Almost every one of these reviewers did not play this game on standard server load, which 99.9% .9 of this community will play every single day for the remainder of this year. Metacritic, please take these reviews down, especially the ones that have willingly said they have not played the game. Think about it, a game that has had 20 patches, countless controversies, countless unanswered issues, the lowest audience review score in franchise history has had zero updates from the people that played it first. What happened to these people? Are they not people that play this game throughout the year? Are they not fans of the franchise they raved so hard about? Are websites unable to be edited? How can you be a fan of this franchise and only play it for the first week pre-launch? Even I revisited the game from time to time after the release to see if my review still holds validity. The truth is, my review was not nearly as harsh on this game as it should have been. Some of these people just don't seem to be fans of the franchise. Maybe there's more, but the Bleacher Report guy is the only one that I know that went back and reevaluated his FIFA 20 review. Although this is good, it's hard for me to understand anyone that originally thought this game was good, or anyone that still says patches ruined this game. This game was a pile of garbage from the start, and at best, I'll agree that it became a bigger pile of garbage along the way. A cynical part of me wants to think this was just posted to appease the community and get easy views slash retweets. Regardless, it's better to submit your homework late than never, so I will take it. So what do I look for when I'm reviewing a game? Am I a special snowflake? No, I'm just a clown on the internet, but I try my best to be an honest clown. I explain my way of thinking and give clear examples. I think and hope many of you would agree that a game's greatness lies within how fun it is. So what contributes to fun and what takes me out of it? Well, my list of biggest problems with FIFA is as follows. Connection problems, oh my god. We are almost in the next console generation and EA still can't figure out the server problems. This greatly takes the fun out of the game when my players are sluggish, my games are filled with slowdown and speed up lag, I experience connection drops, and so on. When I feel completely robbed based on elements I can't control, I don't enjoy the game. I'd like to point out that out of 20 of these reviewers, none of them, none of them mention connectivity. The only person that did was one that didn't even play the game. Gameplay issues and inconsistencies, whether it's sluggish touches, players not making runs, AI defending, rebound goals, and so on. These, once again, are things that take me out of the experience. When a video game becomes more about chance than skill, my PP just goes immediately soft. Not a single review talks about the countless super apparent issues present in beta, like rebound goals, inconsistent tacklings, only one way to score, etc. There are zero excuses for missing these kinds of obvious things. Did you even play the game?
bugs, bugs, bugs. A game that is absolutely plagued with bugs. So much so that they can't even hide it in their 30 second teaser trailers. I've made a video that is almost three hours long of various FIFA 20 bugs. How can you dock points from Fallout 76 for bugs, but not mention a single one in the FIFA 20 review that every one of us will experience day in and day out? Is it because FIFA has had bugs for years? I mean, if that's the logic, the next Fallout game shouldn't even worry about fixing bugs because critics should expect them. Hell, they can even say it's part of the experience. Career mode is a great example. This year, it was an unfinished broken mess even during beta. Even the excuse that reviews came out early doesn't hold up for not mentioning problems surrounding career mode. Out of these 20 websites reviewing FIFA 20, one mentioned issues surrounding career mode. If you are a reviewer of this franchise, you definitely heard about these problems because they were trending on Twitter during the game's launch. If you did not, you're an incompetent reviewer. That should be included in your review, whether originally or afterwards. The current pay to win system. I am not a fan of any game where the number one competitive mode is based on cash or grinding thousands of hours to gain a competitive advantage over someone. I don't want a mode where one person gains an advantage based on their pack luck or money spent on this game. That is not enjoyable for me. My favorite games are usually skill based. AoE is a fantastic example of that. At the starting point, there is almost nothing separating you from your opponent besides your abilities. Pay to win is a massive problem in my opinion for this franchise and should at least be mentioned in every single review. La PS4 is a great example of a tragic review template for FIFA. Allocating two sections, one for sound and one for graphics. 50% of this review is something most people play without and the other is something that doesn't even change from year to year. GameSpot's final review has bulletin points that sort of contradict each other. How can you write, Volta is a unique way to play, but then go on to say it's basic compared to FIFA Street? Do you like the mode or not? That's all I need to know. Okay Nelly, well I can't trust critics and I can't trust content creators, so who can I trust? There might be a day when FIFA is actually good, will I be able to trust you to tell me when that day comes? Are you just going to be negative all the time? This is one of the biggest criticisms I get. As if I want FIFA to be bad. As if I didn't invest countless hours into growing this channel and this audience around a product that now sucks. As if I don't base my criticisms on examples I show you in my videos. Reality is, I'm sort of in a win-lose situation either way. People will complain about me playing the game or people will complain about me not playing the game. If I buy the game and it sucks, well, you're a dummy, you bought the game, you're part of the problem. If you don't, well, don't say a word because you don't even play this game, you can't even talk about it. Clowns. So this year, I will be doing the most reasonable thing I can think of, which is borrowing the game from someone and I will be playing it around launch. If the game is good, I'm buying it. I'm in heaven. I can make content around a game that I haven't enjoyed in years. If I don't, I can still not completely scrap this channel that I've spent countless hours on. I can just talk about the news, which is manageable and fun for me. I will continue running my big mouth until the problem is fixed or until we have a new competitor that rises from the ashes. I love football. I love the football video game space. I want to stay here. The one guy that I will recommend, and I will say this, I agree on almost every FIFA slash gameplay related thing is Italian Stallion. There is no one in this community that provides better in-depth breakdowns to support his opinions like he does, and he's proven it countless times. Some of you might be saying, well, Nelly, I knew all of this. This isn't this obvious. It doesn't matter. Who cares about reviews? Who cares about these scores? Well, young Padawan, I didn't think too much about it either, to be honest until I realized that these reviews actually do hold some significance. Firstly, there was a case where Obsidian was denied royalties for Fallout New Vegas because their game got a Metacritic score of 84. The studio was denied further payments from Bethesda as they didn't match the previously agreed upon score of 85. At the time, Obsidian were a studio on the verge of collapse and missing out on crucial funding was massive. What does one have to do to receive this critic status? Can I just make up a random website and send EA an email saying I'm gonna suck them off as much as I can in my review? Imagine just for one moment that EA is a smaller developer and their bonuses depend on critic reviews. Imagine whether you get a bonus or not is dependent on this guy. He covers 11 different sports, has a section titled I love the ball physics, and he sees absolutely nothing wrong with the current pay to win system. 
I'm not saying you can't cover 11 other sports and still play FIFA, but what I am saying is I gotta see at least 100 kickups or, or some sort of skill set that would, you know, make me believe you have some sort of football understanding and credentials that you can understand what football is at a fundamental level before you can assess a video game surrounding it. In all seriousness, I don't really know what the assessment would be, but I personally would love to see football as a top three passion of yours, some understanding of community complaints, and a fundamental football knowledge. Even with those three simple criteria, most of these reviewers would not pass. I don't know what deal EA might have with reviews, but at least this makes it very clear that these reviews do hold some real world value. Also, these reviews do have some weight because EA uses them to heavily market their game. This to me is very close to false advertising in my perfect world and I know this will never happen but maybe one day. FIFA has a rating of 18 plus with a little sign that says does include gambling and a nice little 1.1 user score right on the cover. Another thing to think about is how executives see this game year in and year out. All they see is positive critic scores and increased profits. Why would they ever think of making any changes to the franchise? To summarize, I am sick and tired of FIFA getting high critic praise every single year, regardless of how garbage the game is. These people also need to be held accountable for their lies and incompetence. I don't know how many of these reviewers are bought, but when I don't see a single negative critic review for one of the worst games in franchise history, I'm absolutely disgusted. If someone at Metacritic is listening, please, for the love of God, remove the 36 hour user embargo for FIFA or move the date to when the game is available for early access. And I don't even know how we would do this, but some of these critic reviews need to lose their credentials. They should not be considered critics, especially the ones that have willingly said they don't play the game or ones that have no understanding of football or FIFA as a franchise. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like and sub. If you didn't, you're probably a critic. And if you want to see more cool content from me, check out my second channel and check out my podcast where I'm having a bunch of random people from the FIFA community. And if you're interested in having a further discussion about this video, come hang out in our Discord and tell me about all the mistakes I've made. Make sure to check out our sponsors. And all right, I'm done plugging. Peace.